So I have some questions for you, Father Norbert. Okay, Father Ambrose, shoot. So how about first, what would you recommend to our friends trying to dive well and zealously into the spirit of this holy season? How should they approach fasting? Okay, good question. So many people ask at the time of Lent, does Sunday count and what's the minimum? And when we're talking about fasting, we should be talking about a generous, generous living of our faith in ways that really go uh, outside of the norm. And and remember, in the Middle Ages and in the, the early church, it, during the season of Lent, every day was a fast day. Every day was one meal. And then, of course, the, uh, in the Middle Ages, no dairy products. And it, that was even for kids. That was for babies and elderly people. Today, there are so many exceptions and so many loopholes. And you have one meal on those two days only. There's only two days when you're required to really fast with one meal. That's but you, Ash Wednesday and Good Friday. Good Friday. But you can also, though, on those days, take two other meals as long as they don't add up to the one meal. And all of this is just dismantling that beautiful ancient practice of going deep during the season of Lent. We, it's, it's the great fast in preparation for a great feast. Right. So it, it, it better be something great that we're trying to offer humbly to God. I'm glad you mentioned that part, Father Norbert, because of course the theme for our Lenten observance this year with our friends at home is preparing for the wedding feast of the Lamb, Ad Chenam Anyi. So a great feast of this wedding banquet of the Lamb merits a great fast. 40 days preparation. Think of the, all the preparations for uh, a marriage in our family. How much goes into that? What are we putting into Lent? What are we giving the Lord? St. Paul said, I punish my body in order to bring it into subjection. And then the mind and the soul can be lighter and we can pray. And when we pray, we can grow in virtue and we can become holy and the world will actually be a truly better place. There's that wonderful story from the life of St. Norbert. Yes. What's that that part about the, about the um, even he mentions where even little children right. are fasting even like Even little that. children are permitted dairy products and that. And you're thinking, well, their infants were allowed to nurse at the breast, but that was it. <laughs> Amazing. So it might be interesting for our friends at home to hear a little bit about the perspective of a canon regular, we canons regular living here in an abbey and what Lent is like for us and how maybe that could inspire those who are participating in Lent with us virtually this year. Remember, uh, both our Holy Fathers, Augustine and Norbert, loved fasting. The, uh, St. Augustine says in the rule of fast and abstain from food and drink as much as your health permits. Very generous. Uh, St. Norbert fasted every day for the rest of his life after his conversion in a spirit of reparation uh, to humble himself before God for all those wasted years. Look at the children of Fatima. They kept dreaming up, how can we give away our lunch? They were doing everything they could. And, and that's the spirit that we find in a monastery. Uh, we seriously recognize that the world is out of balance, the spiritual world, and we need to bring that equilibrium back through our fasting. Elevate the mind, restrain vices, and grow in virtue and reap the rewards of virtue. And it's all God's work. Now that's the beauty of fasting during Lent because when we fast during a season like Lent where the church encourages us, there's all these graces that pour through the practice that are not there when we're doing it on our own the rest yes. of the year. So, and so many people can fast so generously because of their health or because of their fitness. I mean, the world is, the, the contemporary world, the secular world is marked by rigor yes. at the table, isn't it? It is. And so we could maybe um, recuperate the spiritual aspect of that so that it's not just about how I look or how well I perform on the athletic field, but how well I pray. Yeah, fasting has nothing to do with dieting, but it has everything to do with growth and holiness, spiritual growth, the soul humbling ourselves. In the uh, uh, Ash Wednesday, we heard the prophet Joel declaring a fast and saying, we humble ourselves and we're, we're putting on sackcloth and ashes and we're showing that we're little and how much we need God. And fasting is not easy. Uh, and people ask, well, what do I do when it starts to get really hard? Keep going. What do I do when prayer gets really difficult? Keep praying. And of course, watch your health. But St. Teresa of Avila famously said, I don't know anybody that has ever ruined their health by fasting too much. On the contrary, people, we're always so f afraid we're going to go too far. 
So don't be afraid. You know, here in the, well, you know, but our friends don't know that in, in an abbey like ours, we have a fasting season that begins with the triumph of the Holy Cross in September, September 14th. And we fast all the way until Easter. And of course, that's abstinence from meat three days a week. And it's, you know, uh, the kind of monastic spirit is that most of the time we look at our life like we're taking one meal a day. Right, right. All the time. That's, a, that's fasting every day of a sort, uh, the ecclesiastical fast. It's very possible to Absolutely. live life like it this. It is. It's, 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 it's almost every day for so long, you realize that there's no problem. There's no problem. So when we can dive in and Lent. We can. We can do it. God gives, he doesn't call us to do something that he will not give us the grace to uh, to do. And it's a gift to the Lord and the church. Remember that it's uh, essential for us to fast. Our Lord said, when the bridegroom is taken away, then they will fast. The Gospel of Ash Wednesday. When you fast, do not be like the hypocrites. He doesn't say if you fast. He says when you fast. We have to fast yes. if we want to be obedient to our Lord. And the Gospel of Sunday, this coming Sunday, is the uh, Lord in the desert, 40 days and 40 nights. No food or drink, at least according to one Gospel version, very specific. No food or drink for 40 days or 40 nights. So we can, we can do our Lenten program. We can manage, and our Lord will be there holding the hand as we go through. Let's all together really commit ourselves to this kind of a program. Amen. And let's see what happens at the end when we celebrate the wedding feast of the Lamb. Thank you, Father Norbert. Thank you, Father Ambrose. God bless.